I play a character named Gloria Michaels, who's loosely based on, uh, or a kind of Nancy Grace type. She's a superstar in her own mind and locally, um, you know, has major ambitions. And she finds Sue Button's story can maybe get some good ratings. And then Mila's character is kind of an opposite type of maybe a real journalist. I'll let her explain. Um, thank you, Juliet. I don't know if I would call myself a real journalist, but I would call myself a go-getter. Um, I think she admires uh, Juliet's character and ultimately wants to be her. Um, and so she's trying to find stories where they don't exist. And when she stumble upon her sister story, for all the wrong reasons, she wants to exploit it. And so I think that um, the end goal of both the characters is the same, but their journeys and their way about it's very different. Oh my gosh, it's a zany whodunit. Do they still use lingo like that anymore? Um, it reminds me of movies I grew up on that I just loved that would play uh, on an afternoon on cable. Um, the characters are so specific and rich. It's a, it's a crazy, good, exciting cast. And um, it's a, just a great whodunit. And it's a perfect escape for right now. Um, I think that the crazy goings in Yuba County and the ladies are just like us. Um, they're a little bit of a, uh, like a, a, a microcosm of what's happening in the world. And so I think that as heightened as the story is, that the characters and what they're dealing with is essentially when you bring it down, 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 is just everything that everybody's dealing with when it comes to life today, when it comes to attention, seeking attention, finding self-worth, what is our self-worth, where, where, what do we do, where do we belong? Um, this is just a heightened version of it with caricatures of characters. Well, I feel like in Gloria's mind, she competes with no one. Mm. Um, no, except for she ends up competing with Sue Buttons um, when Sue wants to, oh, well, we'll see what happens, but um, um, let's see. It is, I guess, oh my gosh, with these anchors and these people on, uh, on TV, it is a sport and they are trying to follow up with some of these leading stories and outdoing each other. And that's how we get crazy with all these headlines and clickbait. Yeah, I think that in this world that they built, uh, Juliet's character has no idea my character exists. I don't think that I'm a, I, 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 my character, my poor sweet little Nancy has never popped up on her screen, her radar, her reference. She is, I'm like a tiny ant and she's just like a giant human stepping all over me. Uh, but, but reversal, my character idolizes Juliet's character and so, I think that uh, or the, our characters never actually meet or interact or, or have any sort of confrontation or, or conversations. But I think that my character idolizes Juliet's character and is resentful of the fact that she's always getting all these great stories. Juliet's character has no idea I exist. What was it like the first time you saw yourself in the wig? Oh, I loved it. It was very, it was a very Fox News moment, which was quite deliberate with the, also the in tight dresses with the really bright colors. Um, the, the wig though, I've, I've been blonde before, but the blonde bob, you know, she had to be put together and that wig did the trick. Um, we have our favorites in the show though, you know, uh, Regina's wig is pretty spectacular. Um, I think that the script was, Amanda wrote, and does write in a very specific voice. And so I, I, I think that she will become a, a, an incredible known writer for just having her own voice. So often you read scripts and they're well-written, they're really good scripts and they're by very good writers, but they don't have a specific voice. And she writes with a cadence, with a tone, with an inflection that's so specific to her that I think that you'll see movies like this for a very long time from her. So I found it to be wonderful to read, suspenseful, curious, but also in a tone that I hadn't read ever. And so I was just excited to read something that jumped off the page that made me excited. 
Um, well, that's exactly right. It's just some scripts you read and you just cannot predict what's going to happen next. And um, I just loved some of the scenes, the way they played out. Um, but the characters felt so alive just on the page. Uh, so it was so obviously a special project. And then you add Tate Taylor to that. He always um, does things that are really unique and fresh. He never repeats himself. And then the cast was just ridiculous. I'm a fan of everybody in this show. So I was really excited. I mean, it is camp. It's like movie camp. It's like either Juliet said it or, or yeah, it's like a what we what people envision making movies in the 80s was maybe like or the 70s. Um, it was all it's in a town called Natchez, Mississippi. None of you have ever been there. There's no like it's not like there's an outlet in Natchez where you're like, I'm going to I have other plans at night. You have no plans at night because you're in Natchez, Mississippi. So your plans are to hang out with each other. So it does instantly create a camaraderie. He also um, puts everyone on the same property. So we all live in the same, if not in the same house, then in the house on the property, but like a buggy right away. And so, um, you know, the main kitchen was Tate's kitchen. And so it, and Friday nights after work, we would go to Tate's house and have dinner. Like my kids and my husband would genuinely go to Tate's house in the afternoon while I was shooting and have lunch from his refrigerator. Yeah. It was like the craziest, most collaborative environment. And if I wasn't shooting that night, then like Wanda would come into the kitchen in the morning and be like, what's up? And I was like, what's happening? Like it was the weirdest, it felt like a commune. Tate Taylor's film camp. I, okay, I want t-shirts of that next time. Um, first of all, Tate is so special and talented. So it's one thing that he has this incredible Southern hospitality and you're gonna have big dinners at his house and you're gonna connect as people in a way you don't normally do on productions anymore. So that's really exciting. But also he has the talent to back up that kind of socializing. You know, if it was just social and he wasn't a genius, um, it would not be the same. But he pushes you in, um, in your art. And so that's really thrilling. And tonally, this project is really strange. You know, you can do it too big, and and but he he directs you um, to be right in the pocket. And so the whole the whole thing's a really rich uh, experience. I have so many. Wait, one um, favorite memory of film camp. I mean, mine is going to be about my kiddos because it, it was the first time that my kids are probably very illegal. What I'm going to say, but. Um, wrote an uh, like an ATV so like you couldn't you, to get around from property to property was like a forest in the back with like a 500 year old cemetery and so my husband was this is so bad we just take the kiddos in the ATV and they were like over to Tate's property and they had the greatest they were like barefoot sweaty naked playing in the dirt like greatest time of their lives living in Mississippi like they had the best time. So I think my best memories is them genuinely just running around. Um, they, we don't have that in LA. And so they, it, that was really fun. And then I, I'm not going to lie. I like a good dirty martini. And so I like partaking on a Friday night dirty martini. I'm not condoning alcohol, but I'm just simply saying I myself liked it. And I love the fact that everybody got together and was like, we did it another week down and kind of had fun. I have so many great memories. Yeah. The, the DJing, you know, playing loud music in Tate's house, everybody having really rich, delicious food. Um, and then also just on set, I just love when I stretch in ways, uh, you know, you want to be daring. And so the thing is you want to make an ass out of yourself. You don't want to make your, an ass out of yourself, but you want to go the distance and then you want to lean on your director um, to, to make you uh, be more brave in your choices. And so one of the scenes, uh, towards the end of the movie, this was really fun because uh, Tate kept egging me and Allison on to just sort of one up each other in this interview. So <laughs> this scene 
ended up being really funny. Well, I mean, I had to not laugh because we were going toe to toe as these two quasi narcissistic uh, ladies in the in the interview. Where's it was the funny. Bus? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said we used to be the same. Oh, 